All right. Well, it looks like everybody is here at this point. Uh, so we will call the finance committee meeting to order for Wednesday, the 11th of October in attendance, David Phil, uh, Paul Benjamin, Shard Shardul Parmar, Andy Klopaki, and Amy Fiden. And we will go over the remaining items on the warrant and take some votes tonight. And so Linda, if you want to start with that or Carolyn. You want uh, me to share the uh, want the full picture of the warrant on the screen tonight? Yeah, I think that I think that'd be great. Okay. Um, why don't I? Can I just uh, take a sidestep here and share that we did get our cash all certified, so we are good to go into town meeting, and it's very close. Uh, to what we expected. So the general fund free cash is $1,369,252. Sewer reserves are 83,422. Water is 1,063,173. And cable is 149,668. Everything's very healthy. We were expecting sewer to be a bit lower. That's why sewer and water rates were uh, increased recently. And so we should see an improvement there for FY24. Um, I will make a point, I'll write it down now, because I see some of you are writing it, that I will forward you the, um, the certifications from the state so you'll, you'll have them. I'll send them to you by email. Thank you. All righty. So that puts us in, um, in, uh, in good shape for the this, this spending that we had planned. It's always good to get. So let's see. Uh, the warrant. Okay, so we're seeing the, seeing the special town meeting warrant. Do you want to just start from the top, or do you want to work with who here? Who's here for any capital items? Yeah, let's do capital first so the chief can get out of here and whoever else is here from All right. uh, for those. So this is $2,150,000 for the uh, ladder truck for the fire department, which is to be, which needs to pass at town. If it passes at town meeting, then the next step is for, um, is that there will be a ballot uh, election has to pass at the ballot because it's subject to debt exclusion, and that's the only way we can pass a debt exclusion. Um, at this point, um, it is anticipated that it will be probably December 12th would be the ballot election. So um, I don't know, um, Mike Spanknable, if you have something to share, I'll go out of sharing since this is the only paragraph I have. No, I don't. Okay. I just I'm on if there's if there's any questions or I can give you an update on what we're looking to do. Yeah. Chief, why don't you give the quick overview of the, you know, kind of the process as far as getting the new truck and the old truck and what the plans are? Sure. So as you all know, we have a 2000 Seagraves 75 foot ladder, which is a quint. And I think that's one thing that I didn't really communicate to everybody about this truck, that this is uh they call it the Swiss Army knife of trucks. So it's a pumper ladder. It has adequate hose as a pumper or an engine would have. Um, it has tools. It has obviously the ladder. It has the ability to have a master stream on the ladder. Um, it has also has a water tank. So it has 500 gallons of water on it. Our pumpers have 750 gallons. So it's kind of the, they call it literally the Swiss Army knife of apparatus. Uh, so that truck was was put into service in 2000, and um, basically, we're requesting this. We we've we've reached out to numerous. I've had you know I've been at fire chiefs meetings asking uh, the dealers that show up there what we're looking at at cost, um, and conservatively right right now uh, it's two million dollars to build a new ladder truck of this style. Um, and basically, we're looking at a 36 to 38 month build time if we were to order it at the end of the year. So we're talking about three years out to get it. So we're looking at a truck um, 
that would be arriving in potentially 2028 with training and outfitting the truck when it arrives. Uh, we could be looking at the late part of 2028 if everything goes right. Um, so uh, that being said, uh, we're looking, we, we've gone through, you know, 23 years with our current ladder some of our lessons learned, which, you know, we had discussed after we had purchased the 75 foot is that we really, we don't have quite enough reach with that. So that's why we're looking into the same, it's going to be the same, the truck's going to look the same, same, pretty much the same length. The only difference is it's going to have a 105 foot ladder on it so that we can actually access and, and get this ladder to where it needs to go. Um, so basically, two million dollars of that is that is that that request for the new ladder. I can tell you that the EPA again is coming out with new changes in 2024, and we've been warned that be as a result of that, uh, we could potentially see another increase in the cost of the truck of up to one hundred twenty five thousand dollars. If we were to be successful at town meeting at, and at the ballot, they would lock in that price. Obviously, that that price wouldn't change. Um, Right now, they're having an issue with motors. Uh, because of the new EPA requirements, uh, we would be probably pushing off the ladder truck. It would probably be another four years before we would see it in-house just because they haven't they haven't designed enough motors yet to handle the new EPA requirements. So that's that's another issue. Um, the 150,000 that we're requesting, and again, this is in an effort to improve upon uh, basically to improve fire safe, light, fire and life safety for the north 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 end of town. And instead of trading in or getting rid of our 2000 um, Seagraves, which is a very solid truck that we've been working really hard to, to keep up, uh, we're looking to refurb it. So basically the $150,000 on top of that would be to actually refurb the truck after the new ladder truck came in in 2028. Um, We've spoken with multiple uh, fire fire truck companies about that, and this wouldn't be. Uh, we would do research on it first to make sure that we're not going to be looking at a three hundred to five hundred thousand dollar bill to refurb it. Then we'd have you know that money would uh, would be going back. We wouldn't we wouldn't do that. Um, but what we're what we're looking at right now is for that one hundred fifty thousand dollars, we would gain hopefully another eight to ten years out of that truck. Um, and again, that's starting in 2028 because we wouldn't be doing this until that new truck came in. That in turn, uh, in, in the capital request for FY28, we have 800,000, which is a little bit light having researched that now. We have a request to replace our engine three, which is simply, is only a pumper. And that cost today is closer to a million dollars to replace that truck, which we would be coming back to the town in 2028 to to request that be um put on the you know on the town meeting and again probably a ballot vote so if we were to do the refurb and we were successful on it then we would be able to push that back for eight to ten years um i've had you know some questions about why not just refurb it and not get uh you know just keep running this truck it's still a 2000 and it would be, again, second line truck up at North Station. And uh, we need, we are we are truly desperate to, to increase that ladder length. Um, and again, if we if we don't approve all this, if this doesn't get approved, we're gonna, we're gonna have to come back next year again to do the same thing. Maybe we'll pull out the refurb on it and just drive for the ladder truck. But again, we're trying to be as fiscally responsible as we can to actually keep a truck that has been really solid for us. Uh, the the pumper that we would be replacing, it's a 2006 pumper. It was the first generation of this Seagraves Marauder, they call, they call it. Um, we've had some issues with getting it into pump with air pressures. It's been to the, it's been back to the shop. I don't even know how many times to try and diagnose and fix that. That's why we actually moved away from Seagraves when we purchased our last pumper. Um, because they just couldn't give us an answer. So we, we manage it. We manage having how we have to operate with that to make sure that we can get it into pump. Uh, but that's been one of the concerns with that vehicle. And we might even be able to get some, some money out of that if we were to trade that in, in, uh, 
2028 if we were to receive the new ladder. So in a nutshell, that's that's the that's what we're looking to do. So we're looking for the town of Hadley to invest again a much safer truck for our firefighters rather than having to do ground ladders and uh, come up short. We have you know we've added a lot of large commercial buildings in town, uh, roadway uh, not roadway and uh, Homewood Suites. Uh, the Chinese Immersion School is four stories. We have to back our ladder truck into the Chinese Immersion School into the uh, fire lane in order to have our ladder have enough reach to get to the roof on it. Um, all the new houses that we have, you know, houses have increased by, the sizes have increased substantially since 2009. Um, and then with all the new lightweight construction, it's really, it's hazardous for our firefighters to be on these roof now roofs now with truss construction. And this ladder would allow us to actually operate off of that, deploy roof ladders if needed. And now when you drive through town, I'm sure you're seeing that nearly every, if, if it's not, <laughs> I'm sure it'll be happening even more now, but I'm going out and doing multiple photovoltaic inspections with Tommy weekly. Uh, everybody's putting solar on their roofs and that's another hazard that we have to deal with and as far as access and putting up ladders. So um, I guess I'll, I'll, ask if you have any other questions um that's what we're looking to do go ahead paul um i mean i i assume they make ladder trucks that are just ladder trucks but i mean the idea of having both a pumper and a ladder together sounds like a great idea for versatility and also to get water up the ladder directly as opposed to i assume would be loose hoses lined up next to the truck correct that's correct we have a master stream device of pipeway and yeah. okay. can, it, can it for rescue or yeah. for ladder operations? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, I assume that question is going to come up at town meeting, so I just want to make sure we have a good answer for it. Sure. Yep. Um, great. Okay. That was my only question. Uh, Andy, go ahead. Anybody from finance, just chime in. All right. Um, go ahead, Chardul. Um, so, Mike, what's the – so we're not spending all of that money – this is just an um, allocation of, of the funds for future years. We're not spending it this right away. We're, we're, no, we're no. Okay. No, this is, so we, the only thing I can tell you is Linda and I, when we, when we purchased our engine four, um, there was the ability to decrease the total cost of it by paying a portion of the cost upfront. They did lower that. I don't remember what the numbers were on that. And that was something that one of our um, our vendors was willing to look at again. Uh, we are on, we have Houston Galveston. It's a, basically it's, so we don't have to bid it out. Um, it's, it's already been procured. There's two different ones. There's the Fire Chiefs Association of Massachusetts and then also Houston Galveston. Um, and we always, we always go, the town of Hadley has always gone with trying to create and build out a 25 year truck. So that's why our engine four, we spec'd it out so that it has, uh, we have galvanized frame rails. We have, you know, we build it to last, obviously. Um, this truck is going to be 28 years old by the time the new truck comes in. Uh, the standard NFPA standard is 15 years. Um, obviously that's, you're seeing that more in the bigger cities where they're purchasing uh throwaway trucks we call them uh so we tried to build it out where we're we're building a truck that's going to last uh 25 plus years so what so do we have to put a deposit or is there like as it's being built uh, it, or is it all going once it's delivered it's paid for or how, how does that work that's that's how well again it's it would be a decision for i guess the select board and linda if they wanted to put that money up front again so whatever that percentage is that they were looking for to decrease the, you know, the bottom line of it. Um, I, again, we're, we would have to figure out which truck we were going with first and have the conversation with the company. Um, mm -hmm. But normally there's some sort of an upfront payment on it, but then uh, it depends on how we do it. Uh, if not, then the cost is, is paid for at the end of it. Um, our engine three, I think we put a small, this was in 2006. It was a small upfront uh, payment and then the re the remaining balance was paid at the end and it was at the time it was uh, just over 300,000 the check I think I saw in the file was that went out after after it was built 
My, yeah. my best memory, Mike, is that it was we paid sixty thousand last year, which was probably about ten percent of something. So let's say it's ten percent. It might be a couple hundred thousand this this time, and it wasn't even the first year. I think it was it was the second year or so. Mm. So Shardul, to explain, um, you want to know when we start to pay for this? If as Mike, as Chief has explained, they probably aren't going to see this for three or four years. Other than if we have that opportunity to make a uh, down payment, which would reduce the total value. But for that, we would not uh, even, uh, the, the price is going to be fixed when he orders it. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Mike, but I think this is the way we've understood it. it it's, the price is fixed when it's ordered. Uh, it can only go down if we make a, a down payment. And then when um, on delivery or close to is when we pay for it. By the end of that fiscal year, we have to do uh, the borrowing on it actually it's extended into the September of the following fiscal year. That means we make the first payment on the borrowing the following fiscal year. So the payments on the main part of the truck are at least for probably four to five years out from now. So it's we make a decision now whether we need a truck, but we're really not going to see that truck for another four years or so. So we have to anticipate this next need. And um, in the mean, in the meantime, if this passes and if the school one passes, what we would do is we would um, increase the borrowing at this point to pay off other items that have been improved sort of at an accelerated rate so that we have the, the room in the budget in four years without doing an additional increase when the fire engine comes on for borrowing. Linda, what was the impact or, or what was the impact on taxes? So is this a five or a 10 year? What, what was the plan? Yeah, no, I didn't get that handy. I can get it. But I think, Dan, do you have it with you? Yeah, the uh, fire truck five years, 178 a year, 10 years, 119 a year. Okay. Um, you're going to fall out of your chair when I ask this question, but um, is there a way to start? paying on this Linda sooner rather than later or put or, or chief to put a bigger chunk down so we can. And the reason I'm asking is, you know, with these other issues coming up of another fire truck in X number of years, uh, DPW big expenditures. I'm wondering if we can sort of start making some room in people's tax bills by paying now and knocking out some of this now versus waiting the three to four years out when this would be delivered. The way we would do that, David, is we would, let's say we're going to, um, let's say we approve and the town approves the school locker rooms for a million dollars. Um, and we're not, and we're, we're going to borrow on both, both items. We know when they, when a, on a construction project like that, they're going to get going on that right away. So we're going to borrow that million right away. So we would look at that million and then the two million we have to borrow later and see if we were paying for them, what would the increase be? But um, we'd add up two of the dance two figures. Then when we back up and we would pay that full amount on the school locker rooms for a few years so that we would get that pretty well, especially since it's about half the price of the uh, is a million or closer to a million. We would knock those out of the way in the first few years. So there's very little of that that would carry. So there's less of it that would carry into the years when we would be borrowing for the um, fire truck. So that's one way we can sort of front load some of the payments when we know what's coming next, because we also know there's the possibility of the DPW build, building later on. So we would like to get that. If we, if we can, we could, if, we're, if we're really seriously looking at the DPW building based on the indications we get from voters in the next year or so, we could increase that amount even, even more so that we get the, this other borrowing out of the way, the payments on these borrowings done and out of the way and, and not have them added to the buildings later on. We would definitely make an effort to smooth out those tax payments over the next few years so that we're not doing a, a choppy up and down thing and then a, then a great increase when everything comes in at once. Yeah, it's just my concern is it seems that everything we're in short term desperate need of are big, big ticket items compared to what we've been doing the last 10 years or so, you know, with the exception of the, the buildings that we built. So I, I think, 
like you said, any way to smooth it would be helpful. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then if we did have the opportunity um, to make a, a deposit on it or a down payment that would reduce the total value of it, then that would have to go into borrowing. That would go into borrowing right away. And then we would pay as much of that as, off as we could in the first couple of years. So um, it, it's something that we will do everything we can to take control of. And, and, and would, um, I would be going back to select board and finance committee with it because it, it should be a sort of group decision too as to should we increase the taxes at this point or wait a couple more years, um, which would mean a bigger increase later on. But uh, so, you know, that's the kind of strategic um, uh, planning that we would want to do that in a way that would most benefit taxpayers. And um, that should be a decision of, you know, more than us here in town hall. That point, Lynn, is there anything coming up that uh, that would be coming off of the uh, off of payments that would help yes. defray some yeah. of this? Yes. Yeah. I um, actually I went over uh, a bit of that with Paul McCretzky last week to show him uh, actually why we wanted to have uh, some debt exclusion in there because we're losing a lot of our debt exclusion borrowing. Um, if you recall, we haven't passed a new debt exclusion for several years now. So what has happened is the debt exclusion borrowing is going to drop off in about two or three years. So this is that's that's another good aspect of it is we're going to um, initially, if, if we were just borrowing for the locker rooms initially, there wouldn't be that much of an increase um, because we would not let the taxes drop back down again. We would try to keep them up at that at the level that it has been. Uh, to continue the, the payments and again to keep the tax uh, tax impact even. David, just just to uh, to follow up on that uh, about the next truck coming down the road. That's that was the other what we were hoping would be the positive of refurbishing. So if if we were to receive the ladder in twenty twenty eight, the new ladder. Um, the 2000 would go out for refurb, which can take three to five months, three to six months to do. So when that truck came back in, we would be pushing, we would be eliminating the 2028 re capital request for a pumper. And talking with, again, with Fleetmaster, who works on our trucks all the time, um, they say their standard is, you know, conservatively, you'll get an additional eight to 10 years after a refurb. But again, it's them taking a look at that truck up front to make sure that we're not um, we're not going to be going down the road of having a surprise. So, and I got one more question for you that a uh, resident asked me was uh, why not Pierce? Which you know everyone sees Pierce trucks around. Are they more expensive? Are they not as good? What's uh... actually we are looking at a Pierce. That was our last purchase. Okay, and we'd like to try and stay consistent. It makes it easier for for doing it. So we are actually looking at a Pierce 105 foot straight stick, Quint. Um, again, we've always we've always we normally either go with Pierce or Seagraves, and then at the time Maxim, which we don't have anymore. Maxim was also another one of those single source where they do most of everything in house. So Pierce and Seagraves still do that. You're not seeing multi-source things. They do fabricating in-house and everything. Everything's built in Wisconsin and um, real solid trucks. So Pierce and Seagraves were the top. But because Seagraves couldn't give us an answer as to the issues we were having with that Marauder, and we were having some issues with their uh, their warranty and um, you know actually servicing the truck, that's why we switched to Pierce for the rescue pumper that we got. Anything else for the chief on this? Yeah. Um, okay. And do we want to make a recommendation vote as we go so we don't have to revisit these? I make a motion to, uh, to recommend uh, article five uh the fire um ladder truck i'll second it all right who was no. that 
I was writing Paul. the notes. Oh, that was Paul. <laughs> Thank you. Motion by Amy, seconded by Paul, and I'll do a roll call. Amy? Yes. Paul? Yes. Andy? He said yes. And Sherdul? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. So, all right. So that's five? Yes. yes. And uh, well, thanks for joining us, Chief. Unless you have anything else on the warrant, you can take off. Really appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Um, where do you want to go next, Linda? You want to knock out the rest of Capitol? We, well, we have one other. Um, Hopkins, the, the locker room is the other debt exclusion. And then uh, I don't, that may to go together with, because last week you were looking at three of them. Carolyn, is this a, a time we want to talk? You want to talk about the DPW? Sure. And how that plays into the capital? Sure. So if you remember, I think it was Article 6, we were had the DPW feasibility study, which also, I'm sorry, DPW architectural and design, as well as the OPM for $3 million. Um, since that time, uh, right before the, I think it was the last finance committee, I, and I, I just want to review, review really quickly, I had asked the architect um, that just con some concerns that I had heard from committee members as well as uh, residents to look at a phased approach. And the architect uh, did come back with the schematic design part of the of the architectural design, which often can be done first. So that's a total of $225,000. So that is, uh, Linda has put that um, to uh, borrow within the levy. So it's no longer going to be part of the debt exclusion because the amount is so small. So the feasibility study in Andy's here, if I missed anything, Andy, because I left early, um, the feasibility study was certainly on board with that and felt that that was more attainable at this point. It would also, the schematic design, design is, gets very specific about, about specific needs for uh, the Hadley DPW and not comparing it to other buildings. So it will have a very, very specific um, and very, a much more reliable price tag on what the total cost of the building is going to be. So the feasibility study felt to do this first, then look at down the road whether if that municipal bill is passed that helps to subsidize these types of buildings in the future, the next few years, either go for the rest of the design, which is construction ready, plus the construction. So um, they felt they all felt that this would still this would be a very good first step to keep the momentum going. And we will continue to do the education for this. The select board already said yes to changing this? Yes. Okay, cool. So it's already, Article 6 is already off. Your old Article 6 is already off. Uh, yep, select board pulled it off last week. Perfect. Yeah, I, for anyone that wasn't here last week, I, I think the main concern was spending $3 million to have it sit on a shelf possibly versus spending 225000 to have it sit on a shelf possibly. Um, so this seemed like a, a good route to take based on talking with the architect. Um, right, and, and also the uh, certainly the number um, of uh, the overall project was still rather nebulous, uh, given it was like you know like size based on other projects, whereas doing this uh, schematic would actually give us a, a, a as Carolyn said earlier, far closer number to the reality, um, and you know there was. A, Again, a big variability in the uh, in the previous overall project number, and hopefully this will get it something uh, much closer and much more palatable. Okay. Any uh, any other questions on Article Three items while we're here? Any anything anyone needs to go over? We did go over the others last week. Do you the others on article three i know two of you weren't there but they yeah, the other town the replacement of the town uh server twenty thousand uh, dollars the computer aided uh, emergency medical dispatch protocol they're they're anticipating a grant but we need to have the money there in case they don't have it so that would be free cash then hadley media five thousand dollars to come out of their own reserve um for uh, any equipment they may need during the year I have to step out for just one moment. Um, 
All right, so I'll wait for Paul to get back before we vote on recommendations for that. So why don't we go to Article 4? I had one real quick question about the capital articles, although yep. uh, if, if you could, if somebody who was in that subcommittee could speak to it, whether or not the IT uh, server, if this is all locally hosted on local hardware, if there was um, future considerations at some point to uh, going web-based and, you know, hosted, um, completely hosted off site rather than um, physical hardware locally. I mean, the, the, the days of servers are, are getting very numbered. And, so and I don't th think there's anybody on here specifically to address that. I don't see anybody, Linda. Um, what I can tell you is we have made some steps in um in partnership with the fire department, their their last hire is in a municipal IT uh, professional as well as a firefighter, and he is actually in the process of looking at everything that we have, everything that everything IT, and is going to do a, a pretty good analysis of where we are. And Andy, I think that will be the type of thing that will that he will be looking at. So I will take notes on that and just say, look, that's I, I need to be looking at that in the future. They last, I know the last one that we had lasted, uh, I think Jennifer said they were supposed to last five years and we're on in year seven or eight now. So in order to continue the way we have been, a uh, replacement at this time would probably make sense the 20,000 might be on the high side, but we're not sure. She wasn't sure at this point. And yes, um, there's there's five years to figure out whether we continue with this or something else happens. Okay. All right, Article 4. Anybody have any questions on school locker room renovations? Okay, uh, Paul is back. So why don't we, if I could get a motion for three and four. Oh, Paul, go ahead. Make a motion. Okay. Motion to, okay. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Motion to support article three and four, uh, locker room uh, renovations. And the other was, I can't, I can't see the uh, title. Sorry, and capital articles. I'll second that. All right, motion by Paul, second by Amy, and I'll roll call. Andy? Yes. Paul? Yes. yes. Amy? Yes. Sherdul? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Okay. That's for both articles three and four. Correct. And since we have capital out of the way, I guess if you just want to go from the top, Linda, we can just go through the rest to the of the top. Time. Yeah. Okay. Number one, um, this is a pared down version of what you saw last week, which doesn't mean you're going to get less information. It's just for the purpose of posting the warrant. We're going, this is actually how we do the warrant, uh, do the budget at town meeting too. We just do this general language and then we do the handout where of, of all the uh, uh, amounts and the totals. But because I knew you weren't going to say yes to no matter what we did. So at the end of this one, let me flip down to the end. This is what you were looking at last week. And this is the total amount of um, an increase we are looking for in the in the uh, 24 budget. It's going from 20,000, 20, to 20,730,647, an increase of 269,575. Um, last week, we talked about the uh, the, the capital, uh, the operational budget and the capital budget uh, program that uh, we would begin to have access to in, in, for using for the budgeting purposes. And also it would put out the, um, but budget book annually and have that available online and in hard copy. 
Um, we talked about that a bit, and this is going to be an annual cost going forward to have the budgeting uh, something that can be accessed by uh, by everyone um, and also be available uh, in succession planning for uh, future planners that come in and take our places. Um, legal expenses, uh, this is for this year. I think Carolyn said it was a, a one year because of certain issues that are before us. We need an extra $15,000 this year. Um, Carolyn, do you want me to continue going through or do you, do you want to take it? Well, I, I can take it. I, I'm, it's fine. I just want, I do want to talk a little bit, bit about legal as well. We, we okay. do have some, a, a couple more situations that have come up this year that, you know, unfortunately it's hard to predict at times and I, I can't outline it, you know, um, focus too much on it because it's litigation issues. But I think one of the, one of the other things is we do have an increase in labor uh, expenses because two unions have formed this year and your initial, initial agreement, you definitely want an attorney involved. So that will, that won't be like that every year. It might be, we'll have some, um, spurts of increases during negotiations, but that, that is part of what that extra $15,000 is for. Uh, so yeah, I can go down Build, building operations in the IT computers. Those are computers, um, to begin to start rotating computers out for the staff. So that's an allocation of $20,000. Uh, insurance deductibles, um, as you know, Sue Glowatsky has become our risk manager with her extreme knowledge in uh, municipal insurance. And this is, a, and, and I think Sue's on if you have a question about that after I get to the end, she, she can answer more about that. Uh, the police cruiser, if you remember, those had, um, this is, we are looking at those type of expenses to be back in the operating budget, just like uh, the IT computers. That's something that we go for every single year. Doesn't change. Um, so we're, we want to put that back into the operating budget. Um, the Board of Health um, mosquito control fee, it just didn't make it into the budget last year. So we need to, we need to pay that. Um, the veteran services, there was an increase in that. Um, and unions, contracts, and salary adjustments. This is a combination of contractual uh, rene renegotiated contracts for personnel. Uh, but the, the most of it is for the two unions. One was a union, a much smaller union. It was supervisor union for DPW. But the other one included all, really, all, a lot of our non-union staff, which is ad admin uh, positions, clerical positions, um, and it really spanned across all departments in town. So it's many departments. Um, and there will be a breakdown of that about uh, exactly what departments um, those increases are going to come from. So do you have any questions about those? Okay. I would kind of like to hear uh, what Sue had to say about the insurance, just because sure. I don't totally understand insurance. <laughs> yeah, she's on. I am. I'm baking. But um, so <laughs> <laughs> um, we increased our deductibles um, primarily because the town had lower deductibles um, than I did. Uh, and, and it was a little ridiculous. Uh, so we increased uh, auto deductibles uh, to a thousand. We increased property deductibles to five thousand. Um, and it's a per occurrence type thing. Uh, but when you look at how much we saved, uh, and it was upwards of thirty three thousand dollars a year that we saved, and uh, for two years now we've had very few losses. Um, and it just makes sense to self-insure to a higher limit. Okay, thanks. All right, well, if I can get a motion for Article 1. Uh, move to support Article 1. I second. Motion by Paul, second by Amy. Any other discussion on Article 1? All right, roll call. Amy? Yes. Paul? Yes. Chardul? Yes. Andy? Uh, you're muted, Andy. 
Yes. All right, thanks. And I'm a yes as well. All right, I think you've done the hard part. Mm -hmm. Cleaning up uh, prior uh, capital, uh, this is money back in. Um, I think this margin. was a, sure we'll get we'll get money back in. So uh, I think this was I can't remember how much this one was. I'll get it for you in a moment, but um, I think it was like sixty five thousand, and it came in uh, well, obviously it came in twenty thousand dollars lower. So. Uh, whatever it was estimated at, it was high, which was good. It made sense at the time, but now we get the money back. And so uh, a third of it goes back into free cash, water, and sewer reserves, which is where it came from. And uh, so let's let's just go right ahead and do the next one. Uh, when we borrow, we don't get the money back in in the same way. We have to first reduce the borrowing and then, then the money flows back and is available for other items. So we have a larger... Uh, amount coming back, $326,000 uh, $326 uh, is left over on the, um, on the last fire department vehicle. And for the sander, we have almost $25,000 on a $400,000 item is uh, coming back in half, half general account and half water. Let so do you want to take those two, those two together? Any questions? Yeah, just a question on the loader where it says, you know, 6377 going back to free cash. That'll be in next year's free cash, right? Not the current certified free cash. Correct. Yeah, it'll it'll flow in for this year. Um, we'll uh, what I what I do is I keep track of it. So it's, uh, each year it's it's what was certified as of as of July 1. And then um, I tr I can treat I keep track of what we spend in this town meeting and then that's offset by what we've collected back in articles such as this and um, that and a few other factors and uh, sort of go into what our estimate is for next year. So we're always kind of keeping track of where we think free cash is at the moment and where it will land. So we won't have a new free, uh, a new certification before we go into annual town meeting, but we'll know where we stand based on um, where, what we started with and what we did at this meeting. Okay, no other questions. If I could get a motion for Article 2. I'll make a motion for Article 2 in favor of clean up prior capital balances. Second. All right, motion by Paul, second by Amy. Uh, any other discussion? Roll call, Amy? Yes. Paul? Yes. Chardul? Yes. Andy? Yes. And I'm yes. <clears throat> Let's see. I'll stop on those. We did those capital articles. We did the debt exclusions. Um, we are paying prior year bills. I think this is the same as what we showed you last week, except that we found that there was a miscalculation in salary in, la in uh, prior years for the library. So we had to add that in since your last meeting. But, it, it, but we're done adding things. Um, as I explained last week, this is not, these aren't additional, th these are for prior years that we can't pay after the close of the year. Had they been paid on time, free cash would have been down by this amount. So we're not coming out ahead or behind. It just is finishing up last year's um, obligations. So they will come out of free cash this year. 17,603.20. Motion to approve article six prior year bills. Second. All right, motion by Paul, second by Amy. Any other discussion on this? All right, roll call, Amy? Yes. Paul? Yes. Chardul? Yes. Andy? Yes. And I'm also yes. DPA uh, extensions, I don't know the, this is just continuation. I'm not sure. Do you feel like Finance Committee wants to take a vote on extending the time for CPA projects? So we have been weighing in on CPA stuff in the past. So I think we should probably okay. continue that, even though 
you know, just to, to keep our track record here since we okay. uh, weigh in on other CPA stuff. So. Yeah. Uh, we have to, we have to get talk briefly about this, uh, that um, it seems that the, uh, some projects continue to be extended over time. Certainly the uh, town hall pillars is something that we're pushing to get uh, through as quickly as possible. But in the some of these projects, it just um, it we we had a two year language in the articles when they were passed. Uh, we going forward, we're going to be increasing that language to three years. It seems sometimes by the time the approvals come through and the projects get started, it takes that long to actually complete them. Um, so we were extending uh, these current these projects that are out there um, to meet that new three year goal. Okay, if I can get a motion for Article motion. 7. Motion to approve Article 7, CPA extensions. Second. All right, motion by Paul, second by Amy. Anything else on this one? All right, roll call, Amy. Yes. Paul. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Andy. Yes. And I'm yes as well. Okay, um, and there's just one CPA article for new spending. And that is on the um, former St. John's Church across the street here, now the one vodka. And uh, Mary Thayer couldn't be here, and uh, Andy Morris Freeman couldn't, but they're confident in Andy's Klopaki's <laughs> ability to explain. Um, I did, uh, as you know, forward to do some documentation uh, behind this. Uh, the, originally, um, Mr. Koza of V1 Vodka, who purchased the pro uh, property back in 2014, uh, he approached uh, CPA looking to get, uh, I believe it was $26,000 or $228,000 in renovations. Um, after uh, a lot of concern about this being a private building and uh, what levels of partnerships have uh, have occurred between uh, public-private CPA funding in the past. We reached out to the state, asked a number of questions, uh, Stuart Saginar, and um, um, came back with the opportunity here to um, focus in on the exterior of the building, the part that the public does see, uh, namely uh, steeple repairs and uh, some uh, roof and siding uh, repairs and windows. Um, the again, a, a bit of back and forth about this being a private property, uh, but the uh, historic commission came forward in in support of this. This, as you know, you're, you're all familiar with where this property is. It's it's landlocked. It's not a lot of um, other opportunities for it to be done to be commercialized. Um, so, Mr. Co uh, Kozub is is a steward of this property. Wants to keep it the way it currently is is willing to um, submit to uh, historic preservation restrictions. Um, the uh, It's also a requirement that uh, should he sell the building within the next five years, he would repay the town any CPA funds that were um, granted. And um, again, uh, one exterior that feature that he was looking for was the ramp that was omitted because there would be no public benefit uh, to that, not from an abuse uh, standpoint. It, it would that be his own private use? Um, any questions so far? So, um, and again, any questions on the documents that I, I forwarded you? Okay. Thank you, Andy. That was really helpful. Sure. Okay, if I could get a motion for Article 8, please. I make a motion to approve Article 8. Um, it looks like for the amount of $125,400. That's right. I'll second it. All right. Motion by Amy, second by Andy. Any further discussion? Okay. I'll roll call. Amy. Yes. Paul. Paul, you're muted. No. Okay. Uh, Sherdul? Yes. Andy? 
Yes. And I'm going to abstain because I have an immediate family member that is uh, an employee there. So. Okay. Three, one, one. Is that how we do it? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Okay. We have zoning bylaws. And uh, I guess the opioid, Carolyn, is uh, financial. Sure. And that's the last. Okay. That's, I was just scooting to the end. Uh, then there's a first matter drive. So we've got three related to uh, an opioid fund that we are dealing with. So I, I know you've heard it uh, for those of you who um, have were in the last meeting, but this is three articles pertaining to a legal, I, I refer it like almost like a class action. It's not, but it is many pharmaceuticals have been, uh, penalized for passing out opioids uh, too frequently and um, has contributed to the opioid addiction. So a um, all municipalities and towns across the United States have been given uh, a certain amount of money to help mitigate that. It's a formula. No one really knows what that formula is, but Hadley's gotten a pretty good uh, amount. And the logistics of being able to use it uh, this is the best that the um, state can come up with at this point. They're trying to set up something a little bit more efficient. But right now, we have to create a stabilization fund to put the money in that comes in from the state. So that's Article 12. And then Article 13 is um, the um, to fund it, to actually put money in that comes in from the state we have to that that has to be authorized authorized at town meeting and then the spending of it actually has to be voted at town meeting so we are still in the exploration stage on how we're going to be spending that money we have a couple options one of them does include um a much needed position uh that is to support the coa uh, and to support the police department to respond and help mitigate drug addiction, um, alcohol abuse. Um, it, it certainly falls under the use of this funding to create a position um, that is significantly needed at the COA as well as the police department. So that is that we have not decided that the, the select board has not made a final decision on that, but we have to be able to do any of this to use this money this these three um, steps need to be taken at town meeting. It can only be approved at town meeting at this point. Questions? Um, do we want to take? There's three of those related to the opioids. Yes. Okay. Uh, do we have any questions on all three? Can we do one vote to cover the three? If everyone's okay with that. I make a motion to approve all three, Article 12, 13, and 14. I'll second. All right, motion by Amy, second by Andy. And any other discussion? I'll roll call. Uh, everybody moved on my screen here. So Shardul, you're first. Yeah. Yes. Amy. Yes. Andy. Yes. Awful. Yes. And I'm yes as well. And that is it, I believe, for the financial articles. Uh, this is accepting a road. Um, I'm just going to breeze down through it one more time, make sure we've hit everything, the budget, cleaning up prior articles. Um, we did this one as well. Capital articles, you approved the three, uh, the four. School locker rooms you approved, fire department approved, prior year bills, CPA extensions, CPA article. That's the only that was that was three one one. Uh, zoning and opioid. You have you are done. 
and Algonquin's off there, right? That was taken care of. Yes. All right, cool. You got a motion? How was it taken care of? It is we going to be. It is. Uh, we present it to the select board as a, a using our, the remain some of the remaining funding money from ARPA, um, and as well as we are in contact. We've had a meeting with our legislators to talk about that uh, that DEP finding and how municipalities are are faced with the challenges of funding something like that. So, although I don't think we're going to see an immediate impact from that, from those discussions at this point, um, both legislators have been great, Representative Kerry and Senator Comerford. Um, but there's a lot of steps to go through for that. But it's it, it's we are on under, under a timeline, and we have to fix a culvert um, and restore it back to its original condition. Anything else before we get Paul's motion? Well, should we um, discuss just to see um, when is the public forum and are, is it something that um, finances, you're looking for finance to go? I just wanted to have the next dates. So I know that the select board was looking specifically to have the finance committee um, to do a joint meeting. And I think it was on the 18th that we had talked about. I have to look at my notes. Um, because the public forum, forum we typically is kind of a run through mm -hmm. um, for the public to ask questions. But I think the select board might want if you have if you have any thoughts or input into the budget, um, like you've typically done when you've had a joint meeting. So, David, I'm throwing that out there, whether that you would like to have that with the select board on the I think it was the 18th. It is the 18th is a Friday. So it is next week. The 18th is, a, what, what date am I thinking of? Did I say Friday? 18th yeah. is Wednesday. Oh, okay. So we can so yeah. come today. Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah no. no, it's the 18th, Wednesday. You're correct. And Select Board and Finance Committee, if they could be there, because the following week is special town meeting on Thursday. So I am unable to attend Wednesday. I'll be in the air that evening. But um, so is, do we have enough people that can attend that Wednesday for a quorum. I can attend. I'll be there. Wednesday the 18th. Yep. I have to double check and we'll get back. Yeah, and I, I can post it. And if you can't make it, that's fine. And and as you know, as long as you aren't deliberating in the meeting or speaking on behalf of the committee, um, if the votes, you certainly can represent the votes. So um, I will post it. And if you can make a quorum, that would be great. Right. I think as long as we have a representative, at least. So. I will I will try, but I'm not sure I can make it. Okay. And then <clears throat> the 26th is town meeting, correct? Correct. Okay. That's at 7. The, the select board meeting is at 6, Carolyn, or 6.30? I'd have to look for the time. It's, I'm, okay. I'm guessing 6. That's what we've been doing. But I think in the past it was 7. So we've got to clarify that. Uh, that's going to be posted as finance ahead of time as well, right? I can yes. do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, if it, no other questions, Paul? Motion to adjourn. Second. All right. Motion by Paul. Second by, I think that was Shardul, right? Yes. Okay. Roll call it. Andy? Yes. Paul? Yes. Shardul? Yes. Amy? Yes. And yes for me as well.